Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create these spur gears that interact. So you can see if I grab one, you can see them moving nicely together. So we're just going to go through the steps on how to quickly generate the spur gear and how to get them to interact. So stay tuned and see how you go. So to get started with this one, I'm going to go into utilities over here. We first need to put down our gears. So utilities and this drop down add-ins. So script and add-in, scripts and add-ins. If we go down on this, we can see at the bottom there's one called spur gear. So I can just double click on this and it'll bring up this menu. So you can edit these uh, to your preferences. But I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to create two gears. This one's 24 teeth. Click OK. And there it's going to put it in our drawing. It's created a component. Spur gear, 24 teeth. And I'm going to repeat that step. Go down to spur gear again. You can just double click on it. And this time I'm going to make it 12 teeth. So um, once the motion link is set up, the 12 tooth uh, gear will turn two revolutions for every single revolution of the, the large one. Now if we look at it from this angle, we can see they're occupying the same space and on the same plane. So I'm just going to move this across. So right click, move. And we want to select a component. So it's a free move. Select the component. I'm going to drag it across here. So that's more or less where we want it. Sometimes you can see it jumps a bit more than you want. So you can just type in there the distance you want. So I want a little bit closer than that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'll click OK. But now we want to orient it so that these teeth are meshing and not quite, uh, well, not overlapping. So again, we'll right click on it, move slash copy. We'll select components and then select the component we want to move. And we'll go to rotate this time. Um, now we need to select the axis of rotate, rotation. So I'll select there. What you can do is you can just shift it across. Um, but we can see it's not quite in the right place. You can type in an angle there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the math on this one. So we know one full revolution is uh, 360 degrees. And I wanted to move a half a tooth so a one tooth would be the tooth and the gap so that would mean there's 48 divisions here so I will go 360 divided by 48 and then it shifts perfectly into the right place so click OK now we can see we've got these components nicely in place but what I need to do now is do an as-built joint um, so there's a shaft around which this can rotate. So I'll go back into solid here and create a sketch. I'll select this gear. We'll say capture position. And I'll zoom in on the center, on the origin over here, and create a center diameter circle. You can see it snaps nicely to the center there. And drag it out. So I know that that was 12.7. So I'll just make it slightly smaller. So that if it were to, you know, be on it, it would not be uh, touching. So there we go. I'm going to extrude this now. And two sides. Doesn't really matter how far we do this. Um, we just want it going all the way through. I know that distance was 12.7, so if I wanted to come up 20 millimeters, I have to go 32.7. So 
So now it will be 20 millimeters sticking out the bottom as well. Okay, now I'll repeat the step for the other gear. Create sketch on that plane. And then again, center diameter circle and 12.5. Finish sketch. Now again, we will extrude both two sides. Top one was 20 and then 32.7. So now it should be looking the same as the other one. We can see it's got got excess coming through the top and the bottom. Okay, so now we've got our shafts, but I want to convert those into components. So to make a component, we go to the body, we right click on the body and say create components from bodies. And we'll see over there we've got component. And if you wanted to, you could rename it uh, shaft 24 tooth or whatever it is you want to name. Then we know it's referencing the shaft that's going through the 24 tooth gear. I'll repeat that step with the other one and we'll call it shaft 12 tooth. It's often handy to um, give a proper description to the components that you are creating just so that you can reference them easily later on. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, make an asphalt joint between these two components so that it can revolve. So on the top here where it says assemble, click that drop down, asphalt joint. We'll select the two components, Let's select them both. And the snap position will be the center of that shaft. Okay, it hasn't quite selected them, so we'll select again snap position, the center of that shaft, and there we can see our gear is moving. Okay, now we repeat that step. Assemble, has built joint. I'll select the gear and the shaft, and the snap will be the center of the shaft. We can see it's moving. But now if we look at it, if I grab on it, I can still move it around freely because it is not um, not grounded. So let me just undo that move. And I can right click on this shaft, right click, and then right at the top, it'll say ground. I don't know if you'll see it there, it's off the screen. So above move copy is ground. And then I'll repeat that with this one. Let's just see if I shift it down there, no. So above move copy over there is ground. Sorry, it's just not letting me record that area of the screen. So now these are grounded. If I grab on it, it's not moving. You can see it's rotating. So I'm gonna undo that rotate. So it's at zero degrees there and it's in the right position. We'll go back to assemble. Now in assemble, we've got a couple of options. We're gonna select motion link. And in Motion Link, we can select the joints that are interacting. I'll select that joint. So what is the other joint we created? And we see they're both moving at the same time. And they're both revolving at the same speed. But I know that this one, the 12 tooth, should be revolving twice as fast. So let's change this one to 180 degrees. Okay, no, let's other way around. So I'll change the top one to 180. And we can see that this one's re revolving at half the speed. But it's in the wrong direction because we know this gear, the 24 tooth gear, will drive the 12 tooth gear in the other direction. So we can click reverse. We can see there they're interacting and meshing quite nicely. So I click OK now, I can actually grab on this gear and generate that motion over there. 
So there we see how to create a motion link. Um, we've used an as-built joint and we've found the spur gear in the add -in. So just remember to get to the spur gear, it's utilities, add-ins, scripts and add-ins, then at the bottom, spur gear. So that's our video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, like and subscribe. And if there's anything you would like to see, um, give me a give me a shout. My email is in the description. It's fusionfundamentals at gmail.com. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, bye.